I'd like to call the <coughs> April 10th Salisbury City Council legislative session to order. I would ask everyone please to silence any electronic devices that make noise. And should you wish to make a call, if you would please exit the room and call from the hall, we would appreciate it. If for some reason during the meeting there is an emergency, please exit the room, make a right hand turn and go down the stairs. If that exit for some reason is blocked, please make a left hand turn or right hand turn and go down those stairs. If you need assistance, we'd be glad to provide it for you. Please do not use the elevators in case of an emergency. Thank you. At this time I'd like to call Pastor Dana Stauffer of Emmanuel and Wesleyan Church for the invocation. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've blessed us with. And God, I just lift up this meeting before you. Lord, I pray for all the decisions that have to be made. I pray for wisdom. I pray for guidance, God. And Lord, I pray that your, uh, your uh, presence would be known in this room, even in this kind of meeting. Lord, we know that you're still here and you're still able. And so I pray for each and every person that's sitting in these chairs across this council tonight, God, that you would be with them again as the decisions that are before them, the things that have to take place. And we thank you, God, for the great community of Salisbury. And we pray, Lord, that your hand would continue to be upon it and you would keep us safe. And we pray for all the police officers as well. And, Lord, we thank you again for this wonderful day. And we know that wonderful things will take place in this room tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Stout. Appreciate it. Please rise now and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Mayor, we have a presentation. We do, and forgive me, I've got to bring my laptop with me for some some backup information. Um, but good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Um, so we, we have, a, a, I think, a, a very important community institution represented in the new room tonight and um, an organization that has done uh, quite a bit for um, not only literacy in our community, but also uh, for um, employment, uh, basic skills, access to knowledge, and uh, that's our Wicomico Public Library that I'm talking about. So um, this is a, a big week for li our library and libraries across the country. There's also a, um, a big couple of months, and that's why I brought my laptop. Um, we, are, we are going to proclaim it National Library Week here in the city of Salisbury, and I'll get to that in a second. But I just want to share with you some of the things that are coming to our library. Um, we just had, there was just a wild about reading uh, Oh, it's been, it's been moved to Thursday because of the rain. Wild about reading event at the Salisbury Zoo. Uh, there was a race, uh, 5K, a race for wellness and literacy um, on the 7th. Uh, April 20th through May 20th, there is a uh, book drive, and that is in memory of local children's author Ernie Bond. Uh, throughout the county, there are, are collection points, and I may um, ask Andrea Bursler, our uh, library director, to come up in a minute and share with us some of those locations. Um, uh, April 22nd, all day, is Salisbury University Children's and Young Adult Literature Festival. April 22nd and 23rd is the Barnes & Noble Book Fair. Uh, there will also be uh, a, an extension of the book drive there. Um, and May 2017, the whole month of May, is Salisbury Reads Month. Um, this is a community reading program encouraging everyone to read and discuss uh, the same book. And the book is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Um, and this was uh, something that, that Andrea and I have been talking about for a while and we both think is absolutely critical for our community. Um, on May 20th, 2017, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., there will be a book love and block party downtown. Um, and this is a free one-day fair in downtown Salisbury. Um, and this is, we'll have celebrity readers, storytelling, performers, craft and book vendors, publishers, food, and a virtual reality experience. So encourage everybody to come out for that, that event. Um, so, now to the proclamation. Whereas Wicomico Public Libraries are not just about what uh, they have for people, but about what they do for and with people. 
And Wicomico Public Libraries, having long served as a trusted and treasured institution, library staff and librarians fuel efforts to better their communities, campuses, and schools. Librarians are organizers and information experts who for centuries have guided people to the best information resources available. Their expertise and services lending meaning to the facts discovered. And librarians continue to fulfill their role in leveling the playing field for all who seek information and access to technologies, especially as our society is at a critical juncture regarding the changing information landscape and skills needed to thrive in our digital world. And whereas Wicomico Public Libraries and librarians are looking beyond their traditional roles and providing more opportunities for community engagement and delivering new services that collect, connect closely with patrons' needs, Wicomico Public Libraries and librarians open up a world of possibilities through innovation in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, programming, maker spaces, job seeking resources, early literacy programming, education support activities, and the power of reading. And Wicomico Public Libraries support democracy and affect social change through their commitment to provide equitable access to information for all library users, users regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. And Wicomico Public Libraries work to serve all community members, including immigrants, people with disabilities, and the most vulnerable in our communities, offering services and educational resources that transform communities, open minds, and promote inclusion and diversity. And Wicomico Public Libraries, librarians, library staff, and supporters across the country are celebrating National Library Week. Now, therefore, I, Jacob Day, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim April 9th through 15th, 2017, as National Library Week 2017 in the City of Salisbury, and encourage all residents to participate in the events that I discussed, and ultimately to thank our librarians. And because of you and your experts in the library, libraries transform our community. And I'd like to invite Andrea Bursler to come up while I take a breath. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you for what you're doing. Absolutely. Don't go anywhere. Oh. I, have a, I have a present for you. Um, the, thank you very much. Uh, the library, especially the downtown library, um, is such an interactive and engaging piece with the community here in Salisbury. And it has been my great joy to see this council and this mayor uh, embrace the library and the downtown community as, as a key and vital uh, organization to its success. Um, the mayor did uh, allude to and that we will be doing a One Reads program, um, and this is a real exciting piece. We're going to be reading the book The Underground Railroad, which uh, is by Colson Whitehead, and it is a phenomenal piece of fiction that deals with an awful lot of current issues in a really unique way. Um, and so, Mayor, you get the very first audio copy All right. to listen to while you... Uh, I promise I can read. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. While it's you easier do your PT, and while you it. run, I you know, it. so anyway. Thank you. Um, so that, that's, that's the first one. You're hot Thank off you. the shelf. Excellent. Um, the other thing that the Mayor spoke about was our book drive. Uh, Ernie Bond was a, a huge impact on the children's literature world. He is sorely missed. And so for those who want to donate books to this book drive, those books will go to uh, students living in Title I areas throughout the county. It will go to the schools, it will go to daycare centers and local churches and other nonprofits that support these students because children need to learn what a book is before they can learn to read. And a lot of children in our community have no books in their home. And without a book in the home, they don't know what to do with a book. They don't understand the concept of story that stories have a beginning and a middle and an end and characters and those are all key that have those are key skills that have to happen before children can even read um, so if you're interested in that several of the churches in our community uh, Ashbury Cathedral of Love uh, Christ United um, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore is also taking books as well as the four high schools here in town uh, the government office building is a pickup point and there will be boxes in all of these places in the library um, in the Chamber of Commerce um, and, and at the Board of Ed headquarters and those sort of places, we are looking for used, gently used, and brand new books that we can use to introduce these children to the power of story and word. And so that when they come to kindergarten, they're a little better prepared. 
Um, we can't expect our Board of Ed Education partners to teach children to read if they haven't had the preparatory piece at home, learning about books, learning about vocabulary. So uh, this is something we're really passionate about. And I do invite you to come to all of those events that the mayor laid out. Um, we, we're doing this for this community. Um, we, we really want to see people come out and engage and see how much fun it is uh, to, to engage in stories and engage in books. And to, um, so you can all meet all of the library staff because they, they like to have a good time as well. So thank you very much uh, to the city for its continued support. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And, and you will share that. Yes, sir. With, with is all that, of us. Is that tied to his library card? Is that tied to your library card? Okay. Yeah, then you got to return. Okay. Uh, before we get started with the agenda this evening, uh, Councilwoman Jackson has asked for a moment to make a statement. So, uh, Councilwoman, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I know right now I've had the hardest time this weekend. One of the hardest times I've ever had in my life. Dealing with death and dealing with threatening phone calls, all kinds of things, for something that was taken out of context. It wasn't meant like that. I'm not the type of a person. But I'm going to read my apology because I had to type it down because I didn't want to lose sight on what I was doing, but I'm crying because I've really been hurt because I'm not the person that people have portrayed me to be. As a member of the Salisbury City Council, a community leader, activist and spokesperson, a representative for Wicomico County, and a Christian, I'm standing here this evening to publicly apologize for offending the intellectually disabled, the Halley Center, their administration, staff, clients, family, friends, and citizens of the city of Salisbury and Wicomico County. I can definitely say by using the word retarded and Ollie Center, and the same sentence was poor choice. I can tell you I have worked with the intellectually disabled at the Holly Center, and it was a joy working with them the time I did. And they were dear to my heart. I never meant to hurt anyone with this statement, never. But to this statement, was also taken out of context. I'm not a person who ever wants to demean or demoralize anyone's character or their ability. I work very hard to get to this place where I am today. And no, I have not been forced to apologize. This is just the person I am. I chose to apologize, it's only right. I have a position to hold grandchildren to raise and others looking up to me and do want to be in good standings with everyone. I can admit my fault as using the wrong terminology and promise you all this will never happen again because I do not want my good to be spoken bad of. And if anyone knows me, they know my purpose was not to hurt anyone, especially persons and families that have taken care of these persons with special needs. I pray that you accept my apologies and allow our, ourselves to go back to our daily walk in life. I deeply apologize from my heart. I regret ever making that comment. This and, this and has been a, le a learning experience, and I hope others have learned from this too. I thank you so much, and I do want to do a quote because the, the status was made at a time that Maybe I shouldn't have even made a status. The great philosopher Plato said, quote, human behavior flows from three sources, desires, emotions, and knowledge. My emotions were running high as a result of the airstrikes on Syria taking place. So frustrated and concerned about all the deaths being caused, I lashed out on my personal Facebook page incite many different ways to respond and engage in the marketplace of ideas where are, they are available to me. The loud chorus of those who wish to stifle my God-given and my First Amendment right protected freedom of speech and expression is very oppressive. But what I do want to say, there were some things done before, and um, I won't speak on it today, but like I said, I regret 
doing what I did. There was no harm intended to the intellectual disabled. And I hope you accept my apologies and let us go on with our lives. Thank you, April. Okay. I would now entertain a motion to adopt the legislative agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Rudisil, Mr. Voda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And the chair votes aye. I'll entertain a motion now to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda, Ms. Jackson. Good evening, Ms. Nichols. Good evening. Uh, on the consent agenda tonight, we have the March 13th, 2017 regular meeting minutes, the March 20th, 2017 work session minutes, and the March 20th, 2017 special meeting minutes. Resolution number 2741, repealing resolution number 1205, and to approve an updated city policy to grant a partial credit to water account holders when they have experienced an unusually high utility bill due to a leak or other non-beneficial use of water. Resolution number 2742, adopting a cell phone use policy to define guidelines, restrictions, and stipends regarding the use of cell phones by City of Salisbury employees. And resolution number 2743, authorizing the mayor to sign a lease agreement with the Committee de Apoyo a Los Trabajadores Agricolas, the Farm Workers Support Committee, herein after referred to as CADA for use of city property for a community garden. And that concludes the consent agenda for this evening. Thank you, Ms. Nichols. Thank you. <coughs> Questions or comments? All right, then all those in favor of the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Thank you. We uh, have a public hearing tonight uh, on resolution number 2744 that uh, is proposing to amend and clarify certain terms of the annexation agreement associated with the property that was subject of the 2007 Dar Dagsboro Road Faith Baptist Church annexation. Um, anyone who was uh, here to speak on behalf of that, uh, please stand and be sworn in. Okay, hearing none, we'll close the uh, public hearing. And uh, Ms. Glanz, you're up. Good evening, resolution 2744. Whereas Faith Baptist Church of Salisbury, Maryland, Inc., together with its previously designated developer, Vernon Esham, entered into an agreement, an annexation agreement with the city of Salisbury on February, 2000, February 5th, 2007. And whereas said statement included a concept development plan detailing certain residential uses intended for the property and development considerations associated with the anticipated residential development. And whereas conditions beyond control of the owner have rendered the residential development of this property financial unviable in the recent past and at the present time. And whereas the owner has requested that the allowed uses under the terms above reference annexation agreement be expanded to include solar farm as defined under the zoning code and that certain development considerations be clarified to confirm their requirement is applicable, applicable to residential development. Now therefore be it resolved by the council of the city of Salisbury that the concept development plan referenced in the subject annexation agreement be amended to include a solar farm as an acceptable use subject to the terms and conditions of the zoning code and be it further resolved by the city of Salisbury that all previously agreed terms and considerations including roadway utility construction and development assessment per dwelling unit remain as a requirement of future residential construction and be it further resolved by the city of Salisbury that the council we're doing that hold a public hearing um, and that's it thank you any questions okay all those in favor of resolution number 2744 I'm sorry Not yet. No. We'll make a motion a second I apologize <laughs> Mr. Boda made the motion and Ms. Jackson seconded. Now, 
All those in favor of resolution number 2744, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. This item has been on the agenda for three years, four years. I know, I make, make light of it. But it's been on for a long time. Pastor Reinhardt has been here. I think he's been here so much he almost qualifies to be a worker in the city. Um, this is it, I think. We're done, right? Congratulations. <laughs> you may proceed. <laughs> OK. I'll make a. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2419 for the first reading. So moved. Ms. Jackson? Second. Second. Mr. Rudisil? Is this the second? Good evening, Mr. Tillman. Good evening. This is an ordinance of the City of Salisbury approving an amendment of the FY17 budget to appropriate funds for traffic equipment and operating. Whereas as a result of work performed by the Wicomico County Board of Education for the construction of Bennett High School improvements to street lights were required along Wicomico, uh, excuse me, College Avenue. And whereas the City of Salisbury Traffic Division of the Public Works Department purchased and installed the necessary street lights and whereas the, Wy the Wicomico County Board of Education reimbursed the city for actual material expenses and whereas the street lighting budget should be increased to accommodate these efforts, now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, the city's fiscal year 2017 budget and street lighting budget be and are hereby amended as follows with an increase in the miscellaneous revenue 01000456911 account by $14,941 and an increase in the highway lighting account 31152-556201 by an equivalent amount. That's it. Questions? Comments? All right, all those in favor of ordinance number 2419, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. We have uh, several people that have requested public comments tonight. Uh, I took them, I, th I hope I took them in the order that uh, they were received. Uh, we will start with um, Mr. Kyle Pilcher. Uh, I would ask that um, you limit your remarks because of the number of people that we have to about five minutes, four minutes apiece, okay? And if you agree with the person in, essentially in front of you, or you, then I would just, if you come up and affirm that, that would be, that would be fine, unless you have something additional to add. So Kyle, why don't you come up first? This will be short and sweet. But uh, originally I had to come up here to address Ms. Jackson's actions, but uh, I, I just wanna say that I believe she's answered all my questions that I had, and I think it showed a lot of class and dignity for you to get up here in front of your peers and constituents uh, to own your actions and to apologize. Um, and it, it personally got to me because my uh, great uncle just passed this year at the Holly Center. So for you to apologize, I would like to thank you. I would like to accept your apology and I'd also like to uh, shake your hand. Next is Mark Sakel. Mark. I will, uh, I'll affirm the same uh, with a bit of an addition, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I do as well. Thank you, Councilwoman Jackson, for your apology. Um, family of mine for close to 20 years, full-time employee at HC. Um, close office uh, office manager, uh, office manager's daughter, resident of HC. Uh, so I was hurt, but not as hurt as others could be. Uh, you mentioned First Amendment rights, and you are extremely accurate. Free speech is free speech. What we can't control, of course, as you well know and would say yourself, are the consequences thereof. And uh, so the only thing I have to say uh, past that, two things. Um, 
you're held responsible by us, the voters, as you well know. Um, so either way, before or after uh, the apology or with the apology, without the apology, I, I had two things that I, I wish to share by way of uh, what I would hope would be biblical encouragement. Uh, the first is a piece of advice that was given to me um, a long time ago, and that is that we live, I live, you live as a leader in a glass house, and what we say will always mean so much. Um, the second would be a reading from Holy Writ, and that would be Second Timothy, and I'll end with this, Second Timothy 2, 1 and 2, uh, excuse me, First Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I'll let it speak for itself, and then... I wouldn't mind shaking your hand as well for the apology. But this, but this being read, 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, above all things, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. I'm thankful for your actions tonight to promote that. Next up, uh, Shirley Gavi. I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly. Good evening. I've been knowing April Jackson for a long time. She's my great friend. And I know she's a good person. And I'm in her corner. So I just thank God for her. That's why I got to say. I put it in God's hand. I've been praying ever since it happened. So God is good. Thank you. Sir Michael Mitchell. Um, I think my statement, I know Ms. April as well, and um, I saw the comment. Um, I kind of sort of got called out on one of the blogs. Why wasn't I uh, in an uproar or upset about the comment? Um, and it was cool. I took the brunt of it. I understand it was taken out of context. I've been knowing Ms. April all my life. Um, but I'll share this, and then I'll, of course, um, have my seat. Um, August 25th, 2015, um, County Council Larry Dodd made a Facebook post. says, please share. I can't find the right people to place, right place to send this pic to complain. Great parenting skills is the entertainment for dinner tonight. Management did no, absolutely nothing... Uh, and allowed the little animal to climb all over the counter and cash registers. His nasty butt was on the counters and tables where food is placed, and management should be fired for allowing this. This came from our councilman. There was no public outroar. There was nobody asking for him with a petition to be sat down. None of these things were done as they have been done to Ms. April Jackson. This was a, almost a year ago. Nobody said nothing. So fair is fair and right is right. I stand by, by Ms. April Jackson. I don't stand by her comments, but I love her, and I stand by her for apologizing. But again, when Mr. Dodd did this, there was no public outcry, and nobody had a word to say, and the child that he was talking about was mentally challenged. Okay. Oh, Took this child's picture and put it on social media, and nobody said nothing. The mother was mentally challenged. And as a man, instead of going to help with the situation that happened in public, he chose to put it on social media, and we said nothing. We were quiet. And that's where my frustration comes in, because again, all public officials need to be held accountable for their actions if we're gonna ridicule one public official for her actions. Thank you. Vanessa Miles Bivens. Bishop James Urey. Thank you, 
you, sir, to the mayor and to the president. Um, I'm here tonight because, um, not because April is my buddy, not because we go out to dinner. We haven't even had lunch. But because she is important to our city. She's important to our young people. Our young people look up to her. A mistake has been made. But what about forgiveness? That's where I'm at tonight. Uh, and how many times should I forgive my brother? And Jesus said 70 times 7. And, you know, we love you. A mistake has been made. But let's move on from here. Amen. We got, we got so many things that I almost started preaching. I said amen. <laughs> <laughs> but we got so many more important issues. Amen. And I'm, I, I'm like her. I'm sorry if anyone was hurt. Uh, it was taken out of context. But April, we love you. And we pray that this will never happen again. Let's move on from here, okay? Amen. amen. The, the uh, last person that signed up, uh, and forgive me, I'm having trouble. McKinley? No. Is it Mc? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Jake and Council President and all of you and the people that who was evidently you have shown some interest in this particular situation. My concern is when Donald Trump was... Uh, running for president of the United States, but first let me say this. I have a grandson that is disabled. And when Donald Trump got up there and made fun of my grandson, that's who I took it to be. He made fun of my grandson. <laughs> what did we say about that? Yet he is the president of the United States right now. The thing I like to say, and I went around and I spoke with April, and I told April some of the things that she need not to do. First of all, get rid of that Facebook. <laughs> get rid of it. I don't ever want to see your name again. Okay? That's what you need to get rid of. And you are a public figure. People look up to you. You have worked with the kids at Billie Jean Jack Park for years and years and years, and have done a good job. I have worked with you. And I know this is not you. And I know that whatever you said, you didn't mean it the way it came out. But the fact is, a lot of people are going to take it the wrong way. I, too, do not like you referring to the Holly Center. I tell you what, because I do have a disabled grandson. And it's hurting when you hear something like that. But you were lady woman, or whatever, enough to apologize. And I hope that everyone will accept your apology and just move on from that point. I love you, April, because you know you and I have had a lot of words uh, going even back to your daddy, you know, because it goes back like that. But I have worked with you through Parks and Recreation, and you have done an excellent job with kids, and I have never known you to mistreat kids. So therefore, all these people in this room, on behalf of April and myself, the mayor, because I got to talk to him later anyhow, uh, <laughs> I hope that you do accept April's apology, and I would like to apologize for April myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. This is my first um, meeting that I didn't sign up as. Oh. <laughs> Come on up. Just when you get up, could you please state your name? Yes. Okay. Hello, all. My name is Kim Spots, and uh, I am the mother of a child with Down syndrome. And I'd like to speak to the um, use of the word, the R word. I'd like to use this as an 
an opportunity and a platform to educate because too often this word does get used it does get thrown around and the intent and the and the intent i believe is most often not to hurt and not to offend but we need to understand that the r word perpetuates a negative stigma that belittles children and adults with special needs so if we are to move forward, if we are to take anything from this situation, is to learn and understand that that word is hurtful. And there is a huge movement, spread the word to end the word. And that centers on the not using this word anymore. And I'd also like to say, I did speak with Ms. Um, Jackson privately, and I know that she is truly sorry, and I know that she truly misspoke. So for those of you who are circulating a petition to have her taken off this council, I say to you, if there is a politician in this country that has ever misspoke and been taken, had their position taken away from them, we'd have no politicians, <laughs> right? So this is a mistake. We do not need to vilify Ms. Jackson. I have read these blogs. I personally have the right to be offended. I have a child with special needs. And for some of these people who have jumped on this bandwagon to vilify Ms. Jackson, I, I tell you to stop. Is there, is there anyone else who would like to speak that has not signed up? Okay. Could I say um, something? Just please state your name when you come up. Good evening. My name is Andrea Stevens, and I am a friend of April Jackson's. I have been knowing April for years, and when I happened to see it on Facebook, I did not get offended because I am disabled. I am an epilepsy. I have seizures. I have been beaten real bad to come to this point where I have seizures. But the person that beat me, I had the heart enough to ask. I, I, I gave him my, I asked him to forgive me. I, know I, asked, I told him that I forgive him. Although he didn't ask me, I gave, I let him know that I was, I took his forgiveness. So I look at forgiveness as being re like repentance. With the mind to say that you're sorry, but with the opportunity to have another chance, and another chance, and another chance. Because if, if it wasn't for forgiveness, we, none of us would be here. None of us would have another chance, and another chance, and another, because that's what God is all about. And if it wasn't for forgiveness, I probably wouldn't be here. I would probably be in jail because my mind then was to kill that guy that did that to me at the age of 19, which I'm 58 now, and now I'm suffering with two kinds of seizures. And I don't work. And it hurts me not to be able to go to work. It hurts me not to even be able to have a child that I've always wanted all my life. So what April is saying, I knew, I know April, she's not like that. And you know, we all get upset sometimes and we say wrong things. And neither one of you in here can tell me that it hasn't happened to you. You probably did it last night. And you probably didn't pay it no mind. But guess what? God forgives you. It's all about forgiving out here. And once we learn that forgiveness is the word, then we all will get along better. OK, April, I love you. Thank you. Can I say something? Um, you April. I would like to thank everyone who came out and to, to support me, even the ones who were probably going to ring me for a minute. But I thank you because it lets me know that God is real. And I've, this has been hard. It seems like a year. Because people just take things and make it what they want to make it. 
And it was never, ever meant my children were talking about. But it's all right to talk about my kids, to talk about my family members and my deceased father. That was fine. They bashed me. They did everything they could think of. They put my phone number. Not only my phone number, my address, what they thought was my amount of money I get from my Social Security, how much I make here. These are the things they did to me. But I'm bad. Blogs going all week, people calling me, telling me I won't even look at them. Because my heart was hurt because I know I did something that I wasn't supposed to do, but it wasn't that I wasn't supposed to do it. It's just the way I worded it. But you know what? I've asked for forgiveness. I've asked you all to forgive me. And that's as far as I can go with it. I can't take it any further. And I'm asking that you forgive me. And I'm sorry that I'm crying, but nobody knows the stress I went through this weekend. But I never, I never shed a tear this weekend. But today I shed a tear because I may have hurt people. I know I hurt people. And I know I offended people. And as a woman of God, and as a woman, as a leader, I have to set an example. And this is what I'm doing today, setting an example. Because we have to be accountable for what we do. And I'm showing the way. So anybody else that has done this, please don't do it anymore. Be cautious what you say and do and how you say it and how you do it. Because people, not only will they take things the wrong way, even if you don't mean it, they're going to make it what they want to make it anyway. So just be careful how you word things. And if you're going to do it, make it detailed to what you really, really mean, even though they might take that out of context. But I just hope that everything is fine today that we leave here in perfect peace. I thank everybody that is assembled here. I thank the mayor, Julia, the administrator, Hardy, Jack Heath, Mir, our attorney, and Kim. I thank everybody. So let's go on with our lives, and I promise you I won't do it again. Thank you, April. Party, any, any final thoughts? I, I don't have any final thoughts. <clears throat> okay, I, I want to I personally thank everyone who came tonight. Uh, this is, I've said it before, I'll say it again, this is what makes our city great. Because everybody res respected each other, uh, presented their opinions in a very, very concise and, and great manner, and that's what makes our city great. Thank you for coming. We are adjourned. I'm gonna try to get over there.